Hello guys, and it's not only European leaders or American leaders that travel railway in Ukraine, it's also me heading to Kyiv to meet NAFO community 69 sniffing brigade and together with them to give the trucks that we have bought because of your support because of your incredible support we broke the record with our raccoon patches and now two Ukrainian units will get that much needed extremely cool renovated updated upgraded uh, trucks or buses so I'm really excited We are in the heart of brave Ukraine, my favorite Kyiv, and we are actually in the heart of Kyiv, in Kyiv Pechersk Lavra, which is one of the UNESCO heritage objects in the center of Ukrainian capital. But we are here on a perfect mission because two of our buses that we have collected together with you beautiful people and NEFO initiative are here and will be given to Ukrainian armed forces. This is our first bus uh, that will be used by the 14th Regiment and you can see Anna from Ukraine here and most importantly our beautiful raccoon. Uh, it is the first ever patch with a raccoon, you can recognize him and I hope that all of you remember his story. So now he is back to fight back Ukrainian territories. Look how beautiful this message is orcs must die and i'm sorry they have to die they've made their choice when they crossed the border of independent ukraine i'm very happy that today we've met with anna a commander for whom we were raising money and now we have this real NAFO 20 bus. But I'm also grateful to ask you some questions that I have and I'm sure the community also has. And question number one, how are you feeling after these two years of war? Because I know Anna is in the army for two years already. Uh, do you feel the changes in the attitude and most importantly in the Russian propaganda they, they continuously attack us with? Ну, по-перше, дуже вам дякую за вашу допомогу, дякую вашим глядачам за те, що ви допомагаєте. Ваша допомога, вона надзвичайно важлива для нас. Як я відчуваю себе через два роки після початку, скажу так, що я, як була два роки назад, мотивована, зацікавлена в нашій перемозі, так це зараз і є. Не забувати про людей наших, які зараз знаходяться в окупації, у них є е, така проблема, як е, інформаційний вакуум. Тобто Росія вона транслює якісь свої наративи, вона може казати, що Україна забуває, що влада забуває про людей, які знаходяться як в окупації, так і в полоні. Вони можуть казати якусь неправдиву інформацію. І ця пропаганда вона дуже сильно впливає на розум та думки людей. Вони просто вважають, що їх кинули, про них забули, але насправді це не так. Якщо зараз це хтось дивиться з окупації, то ми про вас не забули і ви скоро повернетесь додому. Thank you so much. One question I want to ask, uh, many people say they are tired, even outside Ukraine, they are tired. Our answer, you cannot be tired during war because if you're tired, you're dead, right? Do you feel exhausted or tired with this war? Якщо чесно, то так, ми трошки втомилися в тому плані, що е, нам дуже важлива підтримка. Коли ти бачиш, що тебе підтримують, е, ти ще більше мотивуєшся, ти, е, у тебе з'являється бажання ще більше там, працювати, більше нищити ворогів. Е, коли тебе не підтримують, то твій психологічний стан в першу чергу там, страждає. Я не кажу про там, те, що здоров'я погіршується, те, що ти там, не знаходишся вже два роки біля своєї родини, що у багатьох там, життя на великій паузі стоїть. Це саме про 
психічне здоров'я. Uh -huh. Тобто ти а, хочеш у тебе і родичі там, постійно тобі пишуть, вони за тебе переживають, але ти можеш відчувати собі, себе трохи самотнім. Ми збираємо гроші, щоб підтримувати два баси для двох жінок. І я насправді дуже радий, що в Українській армії є багато жінок. І не тільки на адміністративних позиціях, але й на реальних комбат позиціях. І я маю запитати цю питання, що це означає бути жінкою під війною в армії? І які відповіді, які ви можете дати українським жінкам? Бо ми не бачимо кінця цього війни, і хто знає, можливо, більше і більше ми повернемо в Українській армії армії. На мою думку, жіноча мобілізація вона має місце бути, але треба вирізняти певні спеціальності, на які може йти жінка. Звичайно, у жінок нема обмежень, є і сильні жінки, як фізично, так і психологічно. Звичайно, підняти там якийсь величезний вантаж жінка реально не зможе. Але насправді наші розумові здібності, чесно, вони величезні. А, так. А, дуже багато жінок-медиків є, дуже багато жінок-медиків, яким доводиться піднімати щось важке, таке як спорядження, воно важке, поранені, вони також важкі, ну, важкі в тому плані, що завагоні. Тому а, обмежень для жінок насправді не повинно бути, якщо у тебе є бажання, ти можеш стати ким завгодно. And a little bit about how uh, the bus will be used uh, on the front lines. Uh, автомобіль буде використовуватися, по-перше, для перевозки особового складу людей, які будуть uh, працювати на тому озброєнні, яке теж буде перевозити, перевозити дана машина. Це буде міномет, uh, БК, міни або ми зараз навчаємось на нові види озброєння. Це може бути обладнання, яке необхідне для роботи з новими видами озброєння. Ми вже маємо базу для нового типу амуніції. Ми тільки потрібна нова амуніція. Тому, будь ласка, армі Україну зараз. You know that together we have broken the record and our little raccoon has collected the needed sum in less than one day, which is the official record of NAFO community. So we decided to continue and collect it for a second medical evacuation bus. We have bought this medical evacuation bus that was totally reconstructed and improved and it has a protection against FPV drones and other dangerous things for Oleksandra and her unit. And it is extremely important to help Ukrainian medics evacuate people from the front lines because uh, many of them can leave, many of them can return and fight back and it is our obligation and duty to do everything we can to save people's life. And these are the best people in Ukraine, the bravest and the strongest. And I'm so grateful that we did that together. Guys, I'm really happy to be here with Alex from the 69th Sniffing Brigade. And I want to ask Alex a million questions, but they are busy giving these beautiful buses, NAFO buses to the front line. So I will get a couple of answers, perhaps. Yeah. Um, how many times have you visited Ukraine? Did you visit us before the start of war and after? Oh, oh so I've done 10 convoys that you see here in the background, and I actually now live full time in, in Kyiv or near Kyiv and have done since uh, November. Uh, I hadn't been before, which is pretty poor because my grandfather's Ukrainian. Oh, um, so you're Ukrainian. <laughs> I am, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah, I was born in, in the UK um, and uh, when the full scale invasion happened, I started getting stuck into helping. Um, is it difficult, honestly, to uh, reconstruct the vehicles to bring them here to find the units uh the i mean it's it's there's a whole machine behind the sniffing brigade really so some people are just buying the trucks other people are finding where they are you've seen we've got two different mechanics that have big workshops that basically do all the work on them it's getting harder to find good quality trucks because we've bought quite a few the mm -hmm. price has mm -hmm. doubled mm -hmm. in terms of the cost um, in terms of units, no, I, I would say like there, there is a desperate need for as many trucks as possible. 
um, you know, but we have to choose who gets them in what order based on those most in need. So the truck has to be good and reliable. Yeah, so we, Toyota Hilux is pretty much the best you can get. We only buy ones of a certain age, so the mechanically of a high quality. Um, in the back of it, it has the ability for the combat medic to store all their medical equipment, to sit in it comfortably, to put the stretcher in rapidly. It has a heating system because you need to keep it warm inside because someone who's been wounded will be in a state of shock and that can also wound them even more. You know, so there's a lot of different bits that work together to try and keep people alive. I often promise my beautiful community that helped get the money for uh, the support. I often promise them that after we win, all of them are invited to Ukraine. How do you like it in Kiev? Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> they're definitely all invited, you know, and it's going to be a great party, be it here in Kiev or in Crimea. And yeah. <laughs> you know, Crimea like, beach party. Yeah, like we've got the beach party coming up. Um, <laughs> It's an amazing place, Ukraine. You know, so if, if your community's never been before, they've probably been inspired by the people and the resilience of the people. And I think we get people from all across the world that have never been in Ukraine coming on these convoys. And I think what touches them the most is how friendly people are, how good humoured they are, but also that you know Ukrainians are just like them, right? Yeah. And they can suddenly realise. <laughs> Oh my god, that could be me in that situation, you know, like they're not like weird people from a foreign land, they're like people like you, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think when everyone does come over for the party, they'll enjoy it because the food here is lovely, right? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, well, lovely. I think the best, honestly. I, I would agree <laughs> with that, you know, I, I come from the UK and, you know, I'll... <laughs> These are our patches that we designed together with you, the first raccoon and the girl raccoon. You know that raccoons are fighters and thank you so much for making it real and transforming these two patches into beautiful NAFO tracks that will save Ukrainian and not only Ukrainian lives. Thank you so much, guys. Love you. Guys, I'm actually very honored that uh, I have an opportunity to meet real people from Ukrainian Armed Forces who will later use these trucks and buses and save Ukrainian lives. And here is Torin from 14th U.S. Regiment and medical evacuation bus will go together with him to the front lines. Uh, could you tell your personal story uh, in the Ukrainian uh, Armed Forces? How did you join? Uh, yeah, real quick. Uh, I'm in since 2016. Uh, I've served almost six years in uh, Azov Regiment. Right now it's a brigade. And I uh, like discharged from the regiment, I would say, half a year before the full-scale invasion. Then after the full-scale invasion started, we decided to fight in Kiev because I was here and the Mariupol got encircled in like three days. So we joined the 72nd uh, Brigade for the recon company and uh, I would say we stuck with the uh, brigade for all the Kiev offensive uh, then afterwards uh, like uh, stuff in uh, near Bakhmut before it was sieged and I would say the last year uh, I am with uh, 14th regiment right now. How will you use this uh, truck and what's important about it so that uh, communities and campaigns like ours can support more? Yeah, so basically what this truck does for us is a best uh, Kasevac vehicle uh, available right now for our mission. Uh, as being as a uh, US regiment, we use uh, unmanned systems to deliver organic fires to the enemy and uh, we operate usually in groups all over the front line on the key uh, areas uh, where attention is needed. Mm -hmm. And there uh, we have like support uh, for the guys who actually do what has to be done in terms of if they get injured or whatever, we always have medics on standby with vehicles like this. Why this type of vehicles? Uh, basically, uh, the terrain that we usually encounter in the conditions 
uh, we are using uh, our transports are just horrendous. Uh, like destroyed roads, uh, muddy terrain, uh, tree lines, mm -hmm. uh, like, and everything all over the place. Uh, when you use uh, something like an ambulance, it just wouldn't go through. If you use something more armored than this, it would be slow, it might get stuck, and it gets a lot of attention from the enemy because they also know how to use unmanned systems uh, for hitting targets or just surveillance, calling for fires. So usually when you show up in a Humvee or an LATV, they sometimes don't even agree to waste a grad cassette on that area because they know that somebody important is driving mm -hmm. uh, uh, this type of vehicles in Ukraine. Uh, this type of uh, Kasevak is quick, nimble and usually easily repairable and could fit uh, like I would say up to three or even maybe four casualties depending on the severity of the injury with the medic team inside. This is really important and I also listened to you answering other people's questions mm -hmm. and I would like to stress it for the community of our channel that Russians, they do not respect any rules of war and yeah. if they see this is a medical vehicle, this is uh, people who evacuate the wounded, they target, they continue yeah. uh, targeting. They, they, they see it as a group a priority target, basically, let's say you have your five, four guys spread out into the tree line, they're harder to hit than five, six guys inside one vehicle driving in a certain direction, especially for FPVs and other stuff. They, like, no matter how big uh, of the Red Cross you put on that vehicle, you're a priority target for them right now because they could inflict even more casualties and uh, basically it's, it's like some kind of a terror tactic. So those vehicles are usually like a disposable item. They get broken, they get shot, they get shrapneled, they get destroyed. So, and if even the smaller shrapnel gets into the right part of the engine and stuff like that, it is just disabled. People have to move away from it because it is a priority target right now. So you have a huge turnaround in not only in our uh, unit, but in every uh, unit available. You have a huge turnaround of vehicles because they always get lost uh, at the at the front. If we don't provide people with such things, then people become uh, disposable. So it, this is the more uh, support, supplies, ammunition, cars we get, the sooner we can end this war with Ukrainian victory. February is a very difficult month for Ukraine. Four years already, and honestly, I did not believe this full-scale invasion will last more than two years. I did not believe Russian war against Ukraine will last more than 10 years already. And for centuries, Russia is our enemy. But at the same time, what do you do in such tough times when people are tired, when people have doubts, when there are quarrels and conversations all around the globe? You try to grab all of your resilience and bravery and you come to Kyiv and you bring people the supplies, the trucks they need, the ammunition. Because all of us, we have to confess, we really well know who is evil and who is good. Of course, Ukraine needs your support, but not just for itself, for the democracy and freedom all over the world. Sometimes democracy needs our strengths and our fight for it. If you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and demonstrate your solidarity. Every kind of help, every kind of attention helps. Speak with those who doubt, provide Ukrainian armed forces with the ammunition that they need, and most importantly, remember, we have to win this war together. Now I'm standing in a very special place in the heart of brave Ukraine in Kyiv and behind me you can see a monument to the motherland, the one that has become so popular and famous. And I dream that one day you will come to free Ukraine, you will have a good party here in Kyiv or in Crimea and you will be able to learn more about this tallest in Europe monument. By the way, did you know that the monument to Ukrainian motherland is higher than the Statue of Liberty? I'm sorry, that's true. 
Let me know in the comments below, would you like to learn more about this beautiful monument and cave? And thank you so much for your support. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons, but most importantly, thank you for standing with Ukraine. Slava Ukraini!